I first heard about this calculation of the Mahayoga from Paramahamsa Yogananda's Guru Shri Yukteswara Giri. When I went through the Mahabharata, I realized I have also heard this calculation from Sadhguru, but there is one difference in his account. If these numbers are looking absurd, it is because they are absurd. See, such a simple calculation itself was messed up and they made the whole country believe some wrong numbers. So let us not dehumanize them and simply dismiss all their work by In India, the popular narrative today is that we are now in Kali Yuga and the total number of years in Kali Yuga is 4,32,000 years of which only about 5,000 years is supposed to have passed. That is what all our uh, Panchangas or Almanacs say today. Kali Yuga is 4,32,000 years. Dwapara Yuga is 8,64,000 years. Krishna's time comes towards the end of the Dwapara Yuga. Treta Yuga is supposed to be 12,96,000 years. And Treta Yuga is supposed to be Rama's time. And as you can see, according to this calculation, the difference between Krishna's time and Rama's time is a minimum of 8,64,000 years. And then finally, we have Krita Yuga or Satya Yuga, which is 17,28,000 years, which is supposed to be the Vedic age. If these numbers are looking absurd, it is because they are absurd. When I went through the Mahabharata, I realized how or why these absurd numbers came to be. First, let me tell you the numbers which Mahabharata actually gives. In Shanti Parva, chapter 231, in a conversation between Vyasa Maharshi and his son Shuka, the calculations of these yugas are described. And this is what it says. Chatvaryahu Sahasrani Varashanam Tatkritam Yugam. That means Krita Yuga is 4000 years, and the next line clarifies that it is also accompanied by a transition period of 800 years. So the total number of years in Krita Yuga is 4800 years. Then the next verse says that each subsequent Yuga will lose one quarter of this number, which means Treta Yuga is 3600 years. Dwapara is 2400 years and Kali is 1200 years. So all the four Yugas together come to 12,000 years. And then it further says that this is only one half, there is also a complementary half to it. So the total number of years of one full cycle is 24,000 years. Now Mahabharata is not the only text to have reported this. There are other scriptures also which say the exact same thing. And more importantly, this number finds an agreement in modern astronomy as well. There is something called the Great Year, which is based on the observation that equinoxes move cyclically through the zodiac. And this movement happens at a rate of approximately 1 degree per 72 years, which means a total of about 25,800 years for one full cycle through the zodiac. As you can see, this is very close to the numbers that Mahabharata is giving for the span of one Mahayuga. I first heard about this correct calculation of the Mahayuga from Paramahamsa Yogananda's Guru Shri Yukteswara Giri. You can find this in detail in his book, The Holy Science. He says that our sun is revolving around a grand center and that is what causes the movement of the equinoxes through the zodiac. He says that when we are closest to this grand center, human mind becomes extremely perceptive and that is Satya Yuga. When we are farthest from this grand center, human mind becomes very dull and imperceptive and that is Kali Yuga. As you can see, if we are talking of a cycle, then there has to be a descending half and an ascending half. Two Kali Yugas would come together and two Satya Yugas or Krita Yugas would also come together. So the traditional claim which is prevalent, which says that after Kali Yuga there will be Satya Yuga, is also erroneous and such an abrupt jump is illogical as well because if it was so we cannot call it a cycle we cannot call it yuga chakra yukteswara giri further says that we are presently in the ascending cycle and to be precise we are in the beginning of dwapara yuga i have also heard this calculation from sadguru but there is one difference in his account 
Sadhguru says that we are now towards the end of the ascending Dwapara Yuga and Treta Yuga is going to start in 2082. I looked at both the accounts and if we go by Sri Yukteswara Giri's calculation, we will have to date Mahabharata war at around 800 BCE because uh, as you know the popular assertion is that Kali Yuga began soon after Pandavas died and that according to Yukteswara Giri's calculation would come to around 800 BCE. Whereas if we go by the more traditional or well accepted dating of the Mahabharata war which is 3000 BCE or 5000 years ago and consider that as the benchmark for calculating these yugas then that matches Sadhguru's account. You can watch his videos for more details. Now let us come to this question of how did these ridiculous numbers of lakhs and lakhs of years become prevalent. The chapter in Shanti Parva in Mahabharata which I referred to earlier it leads up to the calculation of the yugas like this. First it says that one month of human beings is equivalent to one day of the Pitrus or the ancestral world. Then it says that one year of human beings is one day of the Devas or the gods. Then it goes on to describe what constitutes one day of Brahma and then finally it arrives at the number 1000 Mahayuga constitutes one day of Brahma and one Mahayuga as we saw earlier is described as 24,000 years. But some over enthusiastic Sanskrit scholar committed a blunder at some point and he translated the last item as 24,000 Devavarsha or God years. So they ended up multiplying 24,000 with 365 and arrived at these absurd figures of 4 lakhs, 8 lakhs or whatever. But God year is not mentioned anywhere and who said that God year even if you assume it as 365 days. And when everything previous was calculated keeping human time span as the basis, why change that suddenly for the last item alone? In fact Vyasa Maharshi himself clearly declares in this chapter that I will now tell the span of the Brahma day in terms of the human day. Therefore there is no need to go into any speculations in the first place. So this is clearly a blunder of some scholar and unfortunately no one dared to challenge this after him. The dark age has already passed but people are still holding on to a mistake that was committed in the dark age. So Kali Yuga is surviving today only as a lie that sprouted during Kali Yuga. So anyway, whether we go by Yukteswara Giri's account or Sadhguru's account, either way we are no more in Kali Yuga. And if Kali Yuga itself is long over, then which Kalki are we waiting for? Which Kalki avatar are we waiting for? No one is coming. This Kalki business itself seems to be the mischief of some of the scholars of the dark ages. Maybe something was said earlier poetically in an abstract way, in a cryptic way and these scholars understood it in their own way and uh, changed it to something else altogether. For example, we can clearly see that what is popular today as uh, the Shavatara is essentially just a depiction of the evolution of life and evolution of human beings as well. But the scholars of the Kali Yuga were probably too dense to grasp this. So instead of seeing that it represents a rise of consciousness, they inverted the whole thing and said that this is about a descent of someone from the heavens. Human mind became more and more imperceptive, more and more religious, more and more dumb in the dark ages and people started fantasizing that somebody would come down from upstairs. See such a simple calculation itself was messed up and they made the whole country believe some wrong numbers for thousands of years and we have been mindlessly repeating it. Who knows what else they have made us believe through their writings. They may have written texts or they could have modified texts which were existing at that time to suit their fantasy. Because human mind had become stupefied and it did not want to take responsibility for itself. They wanted someone else to come and fix their life. As you know this fantasy exists in all religions in different ways. I think Christians say the second coming of Jesus and whatever. Everybody fantasizes the same thing in different ways. So this whole idea of the descending of the divine itself looks like a hallucination which sprouted when the human mind was in a low phase, when the human mind was childish. It is time we outgrew these uh, childish schemes. 
nothing or nobody is going to descend from anywhere but we can rise if we take responsibility for ourselves and if we do the right things human consciousness can rise actually that is what all the heroes of mankind were all the people that we have today converted into religious figures or even gods that is what they were they did not descend but they rose and they inspired everyone around them and therefore they became icons so let us not dehumanize them and simply dismiss all their work by god zoning them let us take inspiration from them and strive to blossom earth is our home so if we have messed it up let us take responsibility for it and let us fix it let us not wait for some alien entity to descend from somewhere and fix it for us anyway we are now in the ascending cycle so let us wake up